it's really trusting trusting them that when rubber meets the road that the decisions that they're going to make are going to be the right decisions and not necessarily right decisions all the time and even when they don't make that right decision that you back them up we you give them that opportunity to know that they're okay even when they they make mistakes and then we learn from that mistakes and then we grow from it but we don't make mistakes just to make mistake and keep on making that mistake that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean environment for us um, it comes with it comes with i guess accountability and 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 just that safe environment that hey i can take chances i can take risks and i can be bold uh, and in the long run uh, that will be the difference welcome to growth think tank this is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Empowering employees is part of the journey for you and your leadership and the journey for the employee. If you think about your job as a leader is to develop those employees to have more confidence and courage in their own thinking and to actually exercise that by making decisions, by following through with any kind of challenges they overcome and empowering them to move forward without your review. Now, I'm not saying that you're completely stepping away from the review of this, but empowering employees is something very different than micromanagement. In fact, I think it's the polar opposite and no one wants to be a micromanager. I talk to a lot of leaders who think they aren't micromanaging, but in fact, they are because they're, they're letting their employees know that they want to review everything before it goes out. When I'm looking at this with my team, I want to make sure that they feel empowered every step of the journey. Talking about this journey of empowering employees today, we're going to talk with the CEO of Urban Infra Construction. And they are a company that grew 553 on the ink list in the last few years. But this is really a powerful conversation. That CEO is Anup Temrakar. And it really is a great conversation to talk about some of the details behind this. To get to the heart of it, he talked about it's trust. And I agree. Empowering your employees is about how much you trust them and how much they trust you and trust themselves. It takes all three of those levels of trust in order to have this work together the way you want to. So in this conversation, we talk about those key elements so that you can empower your employees the way you want to. If you think about your own leadership and you think about where you're going as a leader and you're getting challenged, you're feeling frustrated, you're feeling too busy to actually lead, or there's some specific challenges that you want to overcome, I want to make sure you know I've got free resources on my website. Just go to genehammett.com forward slash resources. You can find some free things that will help you grow as a leader. If you want to have a conversation with me, just click on try coaching and you can actually connect right into my schedule. Now here's the interview with enough. Anup, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm great. Excited to have you on the podcast to talk about leadership, growth, and the special conversation we have designed today. I've let our audience know a little bit about you at a personal level and, and what we talk about today, but I want you to tell us about um, infra construction. Um, absolutely, yes. So, um, so urban infra construction is the the name of the name of the company and. Yep. Uh, the the funny uh, backstory on the company is I used to believe it or not I used to own a clothing company, a store, uh, back in that was my first business and in a mall small one and we did really really well and the name of the store was Urban um, and you know uh, and so I had a very emotional attachment with that with that name and uh, it went very well but uh, you know we tried to get when we were registering for the company, uh, for the construction company, they were, uh, you know, we tried a lot of different variation with urban and infra construction or infrastructure or construction and we couldn't get anything. And about a week passed and it was to the point where, you know, there's more important things to do than, you know, come with a name and infra construction. My wife came over there, let's do infra construction. And then, you know, we went through and here we are, uh, infra construction. So what is it you guys do? Uh, so we're primarily a civil construction company uh, based out of Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, we do we have uh, mainly three different uh, markets that we serve in different capacities. Uh, one of them being uh, heavy highway. We build roads and bridges, uh, mainly bridges and walls. 
uh, that we partnered with uh, larger uh, uh, mega uh, mega companies and 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 then build the, build the roads on major highways. Um, and the other side is on the municipal side, uh, which is cities and counties, and we we uh, we improve their uh, deteriorating uh, infrastructure, which is mainly roads. So we go in and you know. Uh, tear out old roads that are cracking and all those and uh, build new roads um, that will last longer. And uh, recently we're getting, um, we're getting more concentrated into uh, water, uh, wastewater infrastructure where we're building um, new treatment facilities and uh, things like such. So it's uh, mostly I would say 90% of the work that we do is with government entities. Um, well I know oh, yeah. that you had told me that you have about 160 employees. Is that, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Depending on what time of the week it's going up. <laughs> what percentage of your employees are really hired for their brains versus their their strength and, and just hard work, um, meaning actual construction work versus like leadership and um, those people doing the thinking? Okay. Well, it's uh, well at at every level we will have to have a lot of common sense. Uh, especially in our industry than in, anywhere else. Of course, you know, there's a set of challenges being in the construction field, being in a civil construction where you're out in the roads, uh, traffic, dealing with the traffic public, in front of public eyes, you know, safety and all those uh, things come uh, big with the skills, you know, the very specific skills that you need. But other than that, a lot of common sense, you know, regardless if you're working in the office or you're working in the field, uh, you know, we look for people that have a lot of common sense. So I get that. Are... I'm just kind of getting an idea because, you know, being in construction, you probably have some people that just have to get the work done, but you have superintendents and, and your leadership staff. Yep. Um, yep. Is it 20, 30% kind of leadership or management? Um, I would say each, each group. Uh, so it's, especially in the field, it's broken down by groups. So each group would be depending on, type of trade or type of activities, we'll have five or six people to eight or nine people. Uh, so we have 19 groups, at least, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say 20 to 25% would be leadership in, in, awesome. a, in a very leadership position, yes. Well, I asked that because I wanted to kind of dive into this. A lot of our clients listening in here have a lot of employees are expected to truly think for a living, be creative, be innovative, much like your engineers and leadership that you probably have on staff. Um, right. So. I kind of want to focus our conversation on how do you engage those people? Right. Um, I know that you made 553 on the ink list this past year, and it takes uh, more than just your own intellect to make this happen. It's, it's really of a course. team. Of course. Uh, you yes. had shared with me that empowering your people is one of the core factors that has made you guys successful and grow the way you have. What is empowerment to you? Um, it's really, uh, it's really trusting, trusting them that when, rubber meets the road that the decisions that they're going to make are going to be the right decisions and not necessarily the right decisions all the time and even when they don't make that right decision that you back them up we you give them that opportunity to know that they're okay even when they mis they make mistakes and then we learn from that mistake and then we grow from it but we don't make mistakes just to make mistake and keep on making that mistake that doesn't mean that doesn't mean empowerment for us um, it comes with it comes with, I guess, accountability and, and 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 just that safe environment that, hey, I can take chances, I can take risks, and I can be bold. Uh, and in the long run, uh, that will be the difference in 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 you know getting the job done right. You know, you know, because they're the, they're the ones living it day in and day out. To be honest, you know, like superintendent and foremans, they know more about how to, let's say, you know, pour a bridge deck than I do. And I'm and I'm, and I'm honest about that. When I don't know, and I'm honest, say, you know, I'm hanging my head on you, but let's, you know, well, we but we but we just don't go out swinging guns. You know, we 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 plan the work. You know, there are certain parameters that we work under, and you know, within that framework, within that parameters, how you get it done. You know, it's we 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 let them have you know that freedom uh, to make those decisions. Hold on for a second. Enough just talked about employees making mistakes. Well, of course, you don't want your employees to make mistakes on purpose, but you want them to be okay with making a mistake, making a decision, and learning to pick up the pieces for themselves. I had a huge error in my own journey of leadership early in my company where I felt like I solved the problems for my employees. I'm just being honest with you because 
I was doing this every day and I was feeling burned out. And one of my coaches actually asked me that, you know, why do you feel like you need to fix their problems? And I said, I wanted to make it easier for them to do their work. I said, well, isn't their work to fix their own problems? And when I realized that and I realized the mistake I'd been making, that I really took my leadership to the next level. I let them figure out how to do it. I empowered them to a new level. And I'm smiling when I say this because my life got a lot easier as a leader. So I'm just reminding you that sometimes it's okay for them to make mistakes. They may not do it exactly the way you want them to do it, but the key is that they are learning to take ownership themselves. They're doing it. And if they come up with challenges, they face those challenges too. Now back to the interview with Anna. We can appreciate that. All of those of us that drive on the roads and drive on your bridges and, and whatnot. I know you're mostly in Texas or probably around that, but um, we want our crews to be safe. <laughs> and, absolutely. Um, and, and the public, and the public. Absolutely. You had talked about parameters and, and the word I typically use with, with my clients would be around guardrails. When you're empowering okay. someone, it doesn't mean you just let them go off, kind of do whatever you want to do. Right. Right. You mentioned parameters. How do you kind of document those parameters so that they know kind of how to stay safe and, and still operate within those boundaries? Sure, sure. So we have, so we do several things. Uh, for example, we have over the years, from the very beginning, um, uh, we, we've developed uh, kind of like our own system to do like daily reporting. And right. that has, and, and, and every everything um, that we do are, uh, you know, from, from man hours. For example, I'm getting a little bit technical here, but uh, we have budgets, for example, to do everything. And then, you know, we communicate very well, like, you know, this is what we have. This is how, you know, the project, this is our scope. This is what we're going to do. And this is what we have on the on the budget to do certain work. And, you know, and we communicate that. And, you know, they, you know, when they, they do the work at the end of the day, you know, they go in and say, this person, this, this, and um, this is what we got done. And we have that information, like, almost like real time. And, um, you know, we share that information. Uh, if you're doing good, if you're not doing good, uh, you know, over the years, we've imp- we, we, we have been improving that system. And, you know, it's not fancy, but it's basic, but it works. And we, we stay true to it. And uh, it's one of the things that, uh, you know, we really think uh, help, helps us uh, understand where we are on a daily basis. And we communicate and sometimes over communicate uh, what that what what the numbers that we're looking at means. And I want to uh, ask you a question there. And uh, yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off. But the, no, you're good. the visibility that you have across this, obviously, you and your executive team are looking at these across every team. Do you open that up to, to, to other teams to see their daily numbers? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, so one of the things, uh, so that you know, we want we want everyone uh, to learn from. Well, first first and foremost, we want to learn from each other. Uh, if if one of us is outstanding at what they do, I want the others within the group to leverage that. And if somebody is doing it, especially if one of your peers is doing it very well, then you are. Then you know that gives a sense of you know maybe I need to talk to this guy. He can help help me out. So. So one of the Thursday meetings where we have all our superintendents in is we review all the numbers together and and we start that meeting with uh, good news. Obviously, you know, you know our human nature is um, over. The, I would say, you know, if throughout the week you had ten things happen to ha- happen to you and nine of them were good and one was not so good, and our human nature is we focus on that not so good thing. Yeah. Um, so we start that meeting with okay something good about the you know something good that happened to us throughout that week be it personal be it you know a work related and then we kind of settle in and you know go through our you know planning and whatnot and then one segment is we review the numbers and when we're doing good we you know we we talk about you know we congratulate and then you know uh, you know motivate and when we're not doing so good then we you know, as a team, we go through and see why it's not good and then see, okay, the same thing that somebody else is doing, how are they doing differently than how this group is doing? And we, and, you know, a lot of our, let's say like, even like the project managers and, and, and myself, our role really is to facilitate the conversation. And so the, you know, the leaders, I would say, the superintendent are, uh, you know, it's not just looking at the numbers, but what does it mean? How does it compare to, uh, you know, where it needs to be and how can we improve that? I, I want to stop you right there. 
this this numbering system that you have, and, and I don't know if you have a name for it or not, but the vision I'm having in my mind is that it's a scorecard for you guys to be able to communicate with each other around progress that we're making on projects and and the performance of each team compared to other teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would you say it's kind of like a scorecard? Uh, it, it's, um, it's, it's kind of like scorecard, uh, but I would say it's more uh, geared towards uh, currently, uh, and we're looking at ever expanding that, uh, but it's mainly, you know, couple the two or three different things that we feel are important which is obviously because we self-perform when you say self-perform we do the work ourselves so it's man hours uh you know okay. the labor hours uh versus quantity so we we track that uh that is you know one of the things that is very i would say correlated that that our team have a very control on like how many hours you spend to do a certain quantity of work um and it's basic pure arithmetic and uh, and then we look at a couple of different other like materials, concrete, for example, which is the highly, uh, you know, measured material. So we track, you know, the waste on concrete. Uh, right. Trucking, for example, you know, the amount of trucking you spend. Um, so we have metrics that say, okay, for certain square yards, certain hours of trucking should have been, you know, in the budget. And then we see like, okay, how we're, how we're tracking that over the week. So, so what I'm hearing behind this, every industry and every kind of business and in, um, has its own numbers to track, but you, yes. you feel a great tool inside empowerment is to be able to track these kind of daily numbers. Of course. And of course. For those, they have discussions and move forward. And that yeah. really does help you guys grow. Yeah. So Thank you for yeah, sharing absolutely. that piece. Yes. Yeah. And, and then, you know, and one of our core, I'm sorry, one of our core values is know your numbers. Um, and it's it's in the manual. And, you know, for every different, uh, know your number, it, it means different at every different level. For a foreman, you know, that's different. For a superintendent, that's different. For a project manager, that's different. Even for HR, for accounting, uh, that's different numbers. Like for HR, for example, maybe how many how many employees you onboard. How, how much time it takes to onboard. Um, and, and those are some of the things that we are, uh, as we grow, as we improve our system, try to standardize those processes. Before you would say, let's say, if we are hiring people randomly throughout the, throughout the week, now we are, you know, building our systems. So, okay, we'll we will do the, you know, certain times of the week, and then we'll do have a formal onboarding, and this is what we'll do. And uh, because those are, you know, before as you grow, you know, you're you're spending a lot of energy on, uh, you know, bringing new people on board, uh, and it it takes a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to go a little bit beyond this. We're we're coming here to talk about empowerment. So yeah. knowing your numbers and and the the kind of the system behind that is important. What else do you um, do from empowerment? I, I know one of the skills that is necessary to truly empower people is not to tell them what to do, but to coach them through these things. Um, what would you say some of the, the, the bigger skills in leadership are to empower others? Um, uh, you know, we, we, we hear, um, and I think a lot of us share uh, that same kind of, uh, I guess, the outlook um, as far as, uh, you know, leading by doing, for example, uh, you know, we're, we're from all the way from top to, I would say, to the bottom. We're, uh, you know, we're, we're doers. We're, we're in the front lines, uh, regardless of, you know, what your primary role is. And, and I think uh, that that sends a, a good message. Uh, one being very lean on how we operate. Uh, it's not like too many chiefs and and, and you know uh, less Indians. You know we're we're all together in it. Um, so that's I would say that's one of the that's one of the, the key key things um, that we that we make sure is uh, we are you know in the front line with 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 the guys. Uh, so we may not be doing the same thing, but you know we're not. You know, we're not afraid to put in the put in the hours, or we're not afraid to, uh, you know, roll up our sleeves and put, uh, you know, put our hard hats and boots. I, I want to ask you to go back into your journey as a leader and, and kind of maybe pull out a mistake or two that you made when you were trying to empower people that maybe it just didn't work out or, or you found a better way. Does anything stand out for you? Um, well, uh, over over the years, we've hired a lot of people. Okay. And 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 we failed miserably on on some of the hires, uh, and uh, but we're still uh, but but we've made some great hires too, and 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 the approach has always been uh, you know you, you need to and this is something that we believe very truly 
uh, within our core is, you know, you know, everybody, everybody does it with a good intention in their heart. And, you know, you, you need to hang your hat. You need to have that trust. If there is no trust both ways, uh, then it is not going to work out. Uh, so that's the first thing that we try to establish is, is this somebody that we could trust to put in this particular position that we want to put in, uh, which uh, opens up to a lot of vulnerability, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, and, you know, and some, and some positions, uh, it hasn't worked out. Um, some very, you know, for our side of the company, you know, recently we had the, uh, um, you know, op- almost like operations manager uh, type of um, position that we tried to bring someone in and um, it, it didn't work out. And, you know, it was a tough conversation. But Now, one more thing here. Anup just talked about culture fit. Well, this is actually one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of founders make when they're trying to grow a business fast. They bring people in that have a skill fit and they may have the talent or experience, but they may not be a culture fit and they kind of overlook that. Well, as they grow as leaders, they realize that culture fit is more important than those specific skills. That many times the skills can be developed if you have the right mindset, the right culture fit for the organization. These lessons are something I wanted to share with you today because I get to interview a lot of these founders that you don't talk to as many as I do. And I wanted to share that with you because you're not alone if you've, you realize that. And one of the things you can do to actually improve that is figure out what your culture is, define it, and ask questions in the interview process and look for people that have a better culture fit. And the more questions are that allow you to to come up with that, the easier it'll be for you to hire the right people. Now back to the interview. Let me me ask you around that. Do you know why it didn't work out? I I know what I hear mostly, and and you can just kind of agree with me or maybe it was something a little different. But what we typically do as leaders is we hire based on skills and, and maybe even talent, knowledge, and experience sometimes, we forget about the need for culture fit. And I think yep. a lot of leaders like yourself have realized that culture fit is sometimes even more important than specific yes. experience and skills. Is, right. is that kind of part of it? I, I agree. I, I agree. And, and some, some, of, some of it now I see was culture. And some of it I see also was, you know, from my from my side, because I'm probably most critical of myself than anybody else. Um, and, you know, over the times I had some, you know, some, some time to think about, okay, what, what went wrong? And I, I, I find more reasons to point fingers at myself than the other person. Uh, and truthfully, because, uh, you know, the vision that I had, yes, we had a lot of conversations about, okay, where we want to go and how he fits in and all those, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the fact that, you know, not having concrete, you know, how you're going to measure, you know, these goals, this vision that you have and how, not having it written down and then, okay, you know, benchmark, for example, it's like, how are we going to know these outcomes? We, you know, we're tracking towards that uh, outcomes and, 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 maybe also developing incentives towards those. Uh, so that I think was also a big part of it. And that didn't happen because I didn't have that in place. And well, I can so, uh, totally appreciate that. I'm, I'm yeah. glad you made that point about um, you have to blame yourself. You can't really blame others, yep, right. especially when you're doing the hiring, like you just have to right. really look at your own processes right. and right. Um, trusting right. your gut in different ways and how yep. you actually determine yep. that. So enough, right. thank you so much for being on a podcast to talk about empowering employees, uh, you know, having a fast growth company, I don't think you can do it without empowering them and truly trusting them. So thanks for sharing your wisdom. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Pleasure. Well, that wraps up another great episode here at Growth Think Tank. Uh, One of the things that Anup said that I really love is the fact that he said, I can't blame others. I have to take um, ownership of that myself. And, And that really is a common thread across many leaders that are playing at a higher level. You can't blame others. And the more you blame others, the less control you actually do have. Because when you accept that responsibility and take ownership for it, you can actually solve those problems. So in this case, I really appreciate uh, you listening into this podcast. If you're a leader that wants to evolve beyond where you are today, keep your company growing, keep your team aligned together. Make sure you reach out to me at genehammett.com. You can find some free resources and you can check out other details on the podcast. As always, leave the courage. We'll see you next time.